administrator or something like that. That may be something uh, that you might want from the airport management standpoint, but with your safety background might be advantageous if the FAA comes out with that rule. And I'm actually taking, I just registered for safety management systems next semester as well. Oh, great. Awesome. Uh, I'm learning a little bit more in depth about that. So, but it's, it's pretty interesting, you know, especially with all, especially with the Boeing getting released, I think it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, you know, I, I, it was safety management systems all in that. So like, I, you know, I did some you, reading. you're going to be in high demand if that mandate comes out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, we were part of the pilot study at, at Ohio state. And one of our conclusions was that if this gets implemented, you have to have a full-time safety manager on board. No one can just sort of put that on their plate. Uh, mm -hmm. So that means a lot of job opportunities in that area. Yeah. That's why I picked airport management. I feel like it's, it's really, it's like a broad topic. You know, you could, um, you could go a lot of ways with that. You know. Okay, yeah. everybody ready? I'm going to go live on Zoom. Okay. And, uh, and we'll, we may start about a minute early because everything's up and running. And that's a good thing. Um, I feel like sometimes when I'm doing these simulcasts and I'm pre-flighting. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to All Things Aviation, another edition of it. I think this is our 16th show. This is going to be a fun one. Uh, we're going to talk about airports. That's kind of a necessity for most of us pilots uh, to have a place to land. Actually, it's something I think that we, we kind of take for granted sometime because it's, just, it's part of the DNA, so to speak. But uh, airport operations and, and how well airports are managed and the accessibility of them the availability in terms of how many airports we have out there. A lot of people don't realize that they, they hear a lot about commercial airports, but uh, unless you're in general aviation or business aviation, a lot of times you're not aware of all the other airports that are available from, you know, strips to uh, a lot of private fields to some of the airports that uh, are super busy. Um, and, and we're going to, we have a variety of guests to uh, professional guests to discuss that. The other thing that's really great is that we have a couple students on this show who are currently studying airport management at Vaughn's College up in New York. So really excited about that and looking forward to this conversation with everybody. So let me introduce our professional guest first and, uh, and then I'll introduce the students and, and, and we'll get started with some things. And uh, I'm gonna do my very best. You guys have, that have watched this show weekly know that I usually have at least one or two guests who have, let's just say challenging last names, but I'm gonna do my best uh, to, to not butcher them to death. So first we have Robert Olas Loggers. He is the chief executive officer for Arapahoe County Public Airport Authority uh, for Centennial Airport up in Denver, Colorado, uh, the mile high city. Robert, welcome to the program. Thank you, Vince. Great to have you here. We also have Flora Margaritas. Uh, she is the airport manager for Van Nuys Airport, one of the busiest airports in the country. I know Centennial is also one of the busier airports in the country too. I think you guys seesaw on that. Uh, it's part of the Los Angeles Air World Airports, uh, better known as uh, part of the LAX system. Uh, and Flora is also a private pilot. Flora, welcome to the program. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. And we have Dr. Seth Young. Uh, Seth is a professor and the McConnell Chair of Aviation for Ohio State University. We won't hold that against him. Um, Dr. Young is a commercial instrument rated pilot and a certified flight instructor and brings a lot to the table, especially with all that he does uh, there at Ohio State. Uh, Seth Young, great to have you on the show today. It's good to be here. OH. <laughs> You just had to throw that in there, didn't you? Well, you you teed okay me up for it. That's okay, because my fellow Saluki is John 
Pokrophy. Did I say that right? I think I got it close. close. Yeah. Close. Pokrophy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Pokrophy. Um, he is the director of airport operations for Broward County Aviation Department, which manages the Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport, um, better just known as Fort Lauderdale. And John is also an adjunct, adjunct professor at three universities, and he's a private pilot. So, John, great to have you on board. Great to be here. Thank you very much. Go Southern Illinois University. Yes, go Salukis. Go Salukis. <laughs> Take that, uh, Seth. So um, <laughs> just I just want to start this conversation by saying I am a fan of every collegiate aviation program in the country. Absolutely. And, and I am too. I, I, I am too. All, all joking aside, I, I agree with you 1000% on that. And we have, as I mentioned earlier, aspiring young aviation professionals who are both college students at Vaughn College of Aeronautics and Technology, which is in New York and is actually located across LaGuardia. Sorry about that, guys. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and I have airport guys on and I'm busting an airport. Uh, anyhow, first, let me see if I can get his name right. Uh, Trevor, that's the easy part. Uh, Madra Mutu. Did I say that right, Trevor? Yes, you're, probably, you're right on point with that. Right on point. Great. I'm not going to say it again. I'm just going to call you Trevor. Uh, Trevor is a U.S. Marine Corps veteran. Go vet. Uh, who, who used to turn wrenches on fixed wing military aircraft. And now he's currently a junior pursuing his bachelor of science degree uh, in airport management. Trevor, glad you could be with us today. Uh, thank you for having me, Vince. And last but not least, we have Adi. And Adi's last name is Skenderovic. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. All right. That's what happens when you practice a lot and you have phonetics in front of you and all that kind of good stuff. <laughs> Um, Adi is a sophomore. He is from Queens, New York, and he is working towards, he's also working towards his degree in airport management. So it's very appropriate for both of them to be on the program. Uh, additionally, he is a Vaughn's Collegiate Training Initiative student for their air traffic controller program. So great to have all of you guys on here and, and really looking forward to this conversation. Um, before we get started, we have two people that have, uh, at least that I'm aware of, unless all four of you have, uh, or all six of you have, interacted with Bob Hoover. And since this is uh, the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation, I have to start with hearing your stories, um, condensed please, but your stories of, your, of how you met or had a chance to meet and spend some time with Bob. Flora, I'm gonna start with you. Um, you <laughs> You actually, when we were talking about it on the show prep the other day, and you, you uh, sent me a picture, and I was like, oh, cool, uh, at the Reno Air Races. So tell us about that. Tell us about meeting Bob and what that experience was like. Gosh, the experience was great, and I feel very fortunate that I was able to meet Bob um, at the Reno Air Races. But prior to that, here at the Van Nuys Airport, he actually visited the, the airport here um, quite often and was affiliated with one of our FBOs. So I met him here on site first and through some contacts of folks based here at the Van Nuys Airport, they actually uh, were able to connect me with him one year um, up at the, uh, at the Reno Air Races. And I was actually invited to go and sit with him and have lunch um, inside his trailer. So I got a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time and I had so many questions for him, um, <laughs> especially because I was a big fan of the book that, well, he's put out a couple books, but he personally autographed um, his last book for me. And I've always been um, fascinated by him and the, the aviator that he was. I mean, he is unmatched in my opinion. And um, being that I'm a pilot myself, um, it was great to be able to talk to what I call one of the greats um, in aviation. And so um, he did make an impact on me um, just due to his experiences. And I was just fortunate enough you know, to get to know him um, a little better. And the fact that he had such a connection to Van Nuys Airport was big for me. And he was able to tell me a lot of stories of his experiences out here. And yeah. so to, to end it all, of course, um, 
we had his memorial service here over at Clay Lacey Aviation. Right. Several hundred people attended. And I felt like, you know, I was a part of that history and to be able to say goodbye there, you know, was very meaningful to me. So yeah. that was my, my experience with him. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Robert, you also have met uh, and spent some time with Bob, although we, we think we were trying to figure out, somebody said that you were hiding a, a drink behind him, but I, I, don't, I don't believe that. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what was your experience with meeting, meeting Bob Hoover? Well, the, uh, the photograph itself uh, was at Centennial Airport, but I actually first met uh, Bob Hoover back in 1987 at the 40th anniversary of the supersonic flight. Um, he was a chase pilot for Chuck Yeager on the Bell X-1 supersonic flight. So this was a symposium that uh, 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 another Dr. Young uh, put on. He was a historian at uh, Edwards Air Force Base. And, and uh, David Hardman from then Good Morning America was actually the uh, uh, moderator. And it was a great panel um, with all of the folks involved with, uh, uh, with Hoover over the years. Uh, uh, I got to meet all of these guys, uh, did some work with General Yeager, but uh, I kept uh, uh, seeing Bob but, uh, at the Reno Air Raid. Um, you know, clean, clean, uh, uh, missed TNT in 86 uh, before the races started. Uh, uh, you know, I was the wax on, wax off guy. Uh, <laughs> and I had the low man on the totem pole job, but uh, um, got to meet him a couple of times there um, uh, at uh, um, Baron Hilton's uh, trailer that was there, um, and uh, he would hang out with Clay Lacey and um, and my mentor uh, Dan Savovich, who was the airport director at uh, uh, Mojave Airport, uh, which later became the Mojave Air and Spaceport, the very first uh, civilian licensed spaceport. So long history with all of these guys. Uh, Chuck Yeager actually referred to Bob Hoover, Hoover as a pilot's pilot, and uh, I've never heard him say that about anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we get started with talking about airport operations management and administration, I just wanted to make sure that I didn't skip over John or Seth, if you guys have had a chance to meet or interact with Bob. No, unfortunately, I did not get that honor to, to meet him other than to watch uh, different videotapes and everything else of air shows that he uh, um, flew in, but uh, I missed that opportunity, unfortunately. Yeah, Seth? Um, I actually got to meet him for a very short period of time. It was just a few years before he passed away at um, the EAA Air Venture. Yes. Uh, he'd, he'd be there routinely. And, and one year uh, I was able to attend their Gathering of Eagles fundraising event. And he was in attendance and I got to shake his hand and sort of semi have a drink with him. Uh, but I also want to mention, you know, I, I would go up to EAA every year and Tracy Forrest actually became a good acquaintance of mine. And he was the one that gave me the introduction to Bob. So I just want oh, to wow. put a shout out to Tracy. I know we're all, you know, we're missing him now. So um, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for saying that. Okay, well, let's talk about airports. Um, and actually, you know, I know the one of the things that students like to hear is they like to hear what your paths have been, what, what you guys have been through in terms of um, um, be getting to the point of where you are now. So I'm going to go to uh, John first. And John, why don't you tell us how you got into aviation, how you ended up uh, doing what you're doing now? I first got uh, introduced into aviation. Actually, it was back in high school where we had a retired Air Force colonel that uh, taught an aeronautical science class as a science, uh, proved science course. And I'm from Chicago, so I lived underneath the departure of O'Hare. I said, well, that would be interesting. So that's how I got started in there. And they had a flying club. So I got my first flying lessons back in high school and was hooked at that point. I uh, then went on to college and went to Southern Illinois University and started off in mechanics and uh, A&P. That didn't work out so well for me. I'm just not inclined on that side and got into flight um, and got my private pilot's license. Um, but I wanted to fly in the military, but my vision didn't, uh, I didn't have the, the 2020 vision that you needed to have. So I had an internship there at the Southern Illinois airport, and that was my first taste of airport management. And the airport manager, Gary Schaefer, one of my mentors is still down there as the airport manager. And he got me introduced into, I said, well, this is a whole nother area that I was not even aware of. Um, 
So I finished up my degree there and started with uh, the uh, Maryland State Aviation Administration and worked in their general aviation uh, section doing license and inspection of the uh, all the uh, airports in the state of Maryland uh, for safety. Uh, we had our own state airplane, uh, Cherokee 235 that we flew around in. From there, I went down to uh, Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, moved out of the cold down to the warmer weather and um, uh, was assistant manager there for a couple of years and worked on uh, really, I was the face of the airport management out there with the tenants. We had eight FBOs, really, really busy uh, general aviation airport. Um, and then from there, I moved down to Fort Lauderdale International, where I'm at now. And I've been here for 25 years. I've been working my way up to uh, director of operations now. And now I have a team of about 130 members in the division. And we manage the day-to-day -day of the airport, uh, the movement of the passengers in and out. Uh, ground transportation, parking, airside operations, fire rescue, ramp control, uh, a little bit of everything. Um, and a little bit of commercial and GA. Pardon me? Commercial and GA. Uh, yes, you have commercial operations here, NGA. Uh, as part of Broward County Aviation, we also have a general aviation airport to the south of us, North Perry, uh, that we manage as well. It has their own separate manager. But uh, yeah, I went on to the commercial side and have been here ever since. And this airport has been growing. We started at 10 million passengers when I first started back in um, 1995. And uh, pre-COVID, we were um, ready to hit about 38 million passengers. So we've seen extensive growth, which has posed a lot of challenges. And I loved every minute of it. Sure. Um, There's some things I want to point out later that you brought up. But first, I'd like to bring in one of the students. Trevor, I'll start with you. Trevor, you were talking a little earlier in, in, in a pre-show about uh, your background. What, what made you choose airport management with you know, the, uh, all the exposure you've had to aviation? I picked airport management because I like dealing with like the, well, the aviation itself and the safety behind it. You know, working as a mechanic, you know, after you finish working with the aircraft, and then you actually did some kind of maintenance on the aircraft and just for you to see that aircraft actually go up in the air and you're just like, you know, you contributed to that maintenance, you know, it's a good feeling. So I picked the airport management degree, uh, the degree Bachelor of Sciences, because uh, I feel like, you know, it's something I would be good at, you know, and I'm, I'm really good with like organizing and planning. And when you, when you look at an airport, you're like, okay, you know, it's so busy at times but there, there's ways that you could contribute to that you know so help so out. you're a u.s marine corps veteran tell us a little bit more about your background with aviation in the corps etc in the corps well when i went to school i had to go to a school and then i had to go to c school which one was for more like like the basics and then one was more into the publications which was c school and then i got put in the fleet in child theme of uh, MCAS Cherry Point in North Carolina. So I got put, placed in a training squadron, which was VMAT 203. And we worked on, on AVAB Harriers. And it was a training squadron. So we had a lot of students. We had, uh, and the students, they had to go through their syllabus. So we had experienced pilots that were instructors and they would train these, train these students. And once they gradu graduated and completed the syllabus, then they would go to um, uh, of, of a real squadron, well, not a real squadron, but like more of a fighting squadron, I guess, deployed. So we worked a lot with maintenance. Like maintenance was the, the, the key for, and going into VMAT 203, I was told you're going to work a lot dealing with maintenance because, you know, you have to deal with uh, two-seaters, one-seaters, and, and so, but uh, I'll always remember what I learned, you know. That's why yeah. I picked management. Good. So, you just heard a little bit about one of our professional guests' background. In general, what do you hope to learn from being with the program today and having a chance to talk to some very seasoned um, professionals in airport management? I would like to know, like, how, like, um, exactly where did you, like, start after you graduated? Like, did you work as an intern? Did you, how, how, did, how did, like, you know, over the levels of that's a great question, and I'll, I'll let any of our professional guests uh, take that. Well, I, I started as an intern at the airport right there at school, and that's what got me in, involved in it. That's 
what a lot of even my students are getting involved in and in airport management is that internship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think one of the things that I hear uh, quite often, actually every week on, on the various shows about the various areas that we talk about is everybody is very much into wanting to know, you know, right now dealing with COVID, having some limitations, not being able to really get out there the way it like to, what are some of the things that these, these students can do to further their career as they finish up uh, their studies uh, and start to pursue? I think probably one of the greatest things that they can do is get involved with some of the professional organizations. And one of the main ones is the American Association of Airport Executives. Um, they have a committee and I'm one of the committee members on the academic committee and they're heavily involved with the schools and the school set up um, AVA or AAA uh, committees at their schools. Uh, we have a conference call with all the schools once a month. And, and it's a way for them to be able to reach out and make contact with professionals in the industry. Um, they also have um, a hub uh, as part of their website that allows uh, people to be able to match up with mentors in the industry and be able to at least talk to them even uh, through technology. Yeah. Uh, Seth, um, Robert, Flora, what do you guys do in terms of, of um, helping the, the next generation get into, particularly into your fields? Um, I'll, I'll start. So he, the, our organization, the Los Angeles World Airports, um, has historically had a lot of great opportunities for internships. So we have a huge department um, that gives students those opportunities. And I myself have hosted several interns um, over time for those that are interested in airport management. So here locally at Van Nuys, um, aside from our sister airport, one of the things that I do, since it was so helpful to me when I was in the position of Adi and Trevor, is I'm very open to helping any student um, that wants to learn from me, learn from the airport, and all they have to do is send me an email, and I will provide information and help them with contact information or other things. So I was in their shoes one day and I will never forget the help that I got. And so that's how I want to give back. And that's how I do give back. So you're kind of also talking about, we're not only talking about networking, talking about mentorship. Absolutely. And somebody in your circle that, that kind of guided you, gave you advice, looked out for you and that type of thing. Exactly. Uh, Robert Centennial, how about you guys? So we, we have a very active um, uh, internship program. It's a paid internship program for an entire year. Um, it's one of the best in the country. Uh, I don't say that to toot my horn. It's actually Lori Hinton, uh, the assistant airport director that runs that uh, program. She uh, really does a fabulous job. Many of them have left this airport and are now uh, managing airports nationwide um, or are working at, uh, uh, you know, uh, CADEX airports uh, holding down pretty significant jobs. So um, one of the nice things about Centennial Airport is it is uh, large enough to be very active. We have about 350,000 operations a year, um, but at the same time, we have a very small staff. So we actually rotate you through maintenance, the planning, uh, you get to do budgeting, uh, but you also get to do noise plan, uh, noise uh, work in the noise office for a while. Um, operations obviously is the big piece. Uh, uh, we start you out, unfortunately, with the mid shift uh, because it's the quiet. <laughs> Uh, but eventually you'll get to work, um, uh, you know, daytime, uh, working alert twos, alert threes, uh, hopefully not too many. But, um, um, uh, you know, when I started out in this business, there was no internship. And I, uh, I came from the same uh, area that Seth came. I was in Buffalo, New York, uh, managing a very small airport, uh, not knowing, frankly, what I was doing. Uh, I went over to Buffalo in the National Airport, and uh, Larry Hedrick at that time actually allowed me to create my own internship because they didn't have any. And uh, mm. always been very grateful for that. So uh, every airport I've been at since, uh, we've tried to at least establish an internship program. When I came to Centennial Airport in 2000, uh, they had a very robust program. 
Um, every six months, we have a new opening. So uh, if anyone is about to graduate, uh, make sure you go to our website and uh, fill out an application. It's very competitive, uh, as you can well imagine, but uh, it's, it's fun. It's paid. Um, the state of Colorado Aeronautics Division actually pays for half the salary. So it uh, really uh, defrays some of our cost and, and allows us to uh, bring in a lot of folks. And be ready for the mile high city, right? <laughs> yeah, bring your oxygen tank. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a per, not, not the oxygen, but a good segue for Seth to, to talk. Because, Seth, you kind of have a hybrid situation where you're involved with the airport, but you're also a professor, you run an aviation department, et cetera. So, uh, what, what do you guys look at in terms of? Uh, yeah, you know, my my primary job, other than, you know, what you what the other professionals on on the panel is, is to educate. Right. So my job is to prepare the next generation of aviation and airport professionals. So we spend a good part of my time, you know, doing a lot of active networking uh, with students, both here at Ohio State and throughout all of the collegiate aviation programs to try to find what students are interested in. You know, it's interesting that, you know, Trevor was talking about safety. That's just one of a whole variety of different, uh, you know, needs at an airport. Could be safety, could be engineering, could be uh, marketing, could be finance. So, you know, my job is to figure out where the students' interests are and what their strengths are and help them find an internship or find a, a mentor in the industry uh, just by matching them up with people that we know. Um, one thing that I think we can all agree upon and the students will soon learn is that uh, while there are a lot of airports in the United States, um, the industry is really small. So we all know each other, at least one or two degrees of separation. So yeah. the best advice that I could give for any student that's interested in getting into uh, an internship or just getting to learn about an airport is talk to your professor or join AAAE and join the uh, student chapters or the academic uh, relations committee and uh, I can almost guarantee you that you will find at least one mentor at at least one airport that you can uh, learn from and you know, get your career going. Yeah, um, Seth, while we have you, how about telling us, what was your spark? How did you get involved yeah. in aviation? You know, I got into aviation really late in the game and uh, I give credit to all of you on the, on the webinar that are at an aviation school because uh, you already know that your passion is in this industry and you're, you're pursuing it. I, I wasn't that, uh, that proactive in my youth, right? I, I actually grew up in New York and uh, saw airplanes flying on approach into JFK and LaGuardia. And I was always curious as to where they were coming from or if they were departing out where they were going to. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll be a pilot. Uh, and that's about as far as it went. And I didn't even pursue aviation out of high school or college. I I knew I had a, uh, an aptitude for kind of math and science. So I got a degree in, uh, from Buffalo in applied mathematics, which was great, but I didn't know what to do with it. So then I had to go to warmer temperatures just like Dr. Olas Lagers did and moved out to California and went to grad school at Berkeley and got uh, an, uh, an operations research degree, which is super applied mathematics and still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, my first job was essentially in computer programming, and I love computer programming, but I didn't like the job, except for the fact that I traveled a lot. I was actually going back and forth between the San Francisco Bay Area and Denver, and the only thing I liked about the job was the travel. And normally people <laughs> don't like the travel, but I actually looked forward to getting on an airplane, and at the time it was United Airlines, and you can dial into air traffic control, and I had no idea what they were saying, but I thought it was cool. Um, and so eventually I went back to school to learn about transportation. And so I went to uh, back to Berkeley for my PhD in civil engineering with a focus on transportation. And it was only then that I took a class in aviation and airport design. And that's when the light went off. So now I'm like in my mid twenties and thinking, oh, wait a second, I can build airports. That's a job. And I was like, that's, that's great. So that's just, that took it off. And uh, along the, my degree program, I did take an internship at an airport management consulting firm, which works with airports all over the world uh, to make themselves a, a better facility, either through a financial analysis or a master plan to, you know, prepare for their future. And, you know, that's how I sort of got into this business. Uh, once I graduated, 
and took my first faculty job at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University down in Daytona Beach, where I became the airport management faculty member. And that really uh, motivated me to learn everything there is to know about airport management since I had to teach it. Uh, and at that point, I was really in, involved in all aspects of airport management, both with the local airport in Daytona, but also I got involved with AAAE. And so I learned every, you know, all the other topics on, about airports. All the while, I kept doing consulting. So I, I learned how to uh, deal with airports problems and, uh, you know, and, and address them. And I also got involved in airport training and education. So uh, airport professionals always need uh, to get trained over the years just to keep themselves current and also for certification um, requirements to get trained on how to safely operate on an airfield and how to safely maintain an airfield. So I do a lot of that now. And then after about 10 years at Embry-Riddle, I got recruited up here to Ohio State to uh, be one of the faculty members. And that led into overseeing an entire aviation program. So, uh, and our program under the College of Engineering here at Ohio State owns and operates our own airport, which is uh, part 139 certified. And those of you studying airport management will know that's the certification requirements to accommodate commercial service aircraft. Um, we are the busiest airport in the state of Ohio this year with almost 100,000 operations. Uh, so now I have the opportunity to work at an airport, teach about airports, and consult to airports. Uh, so that's my path. Sometimes it takes longer than you think to get there, um, but the end game has been really great. Wow. So uh, very interesting. I'm going to give Adi a chance to tell us a little bit about his background. And Adi, uh, maybe you have a question or two uh, with regard to what you've heard so far in regards to airport management and, and from the breadth of background that, that these uh, professional guests have today. So uh, first off, I'd like to start off with a uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I was never really particularly interested in aviation. Uh, there was a critical moment. Uh, after I completed high school where I just didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, I took a trip, uh, stayed at a, a cousin's house. I noticed on a coffee table, she had a air traffic control textbook. So from there, it went on to reading that book and then the countless documentaries and coming back to New York and uh, looking for schools that specialized in air traffic control to some extent. And uh, that's how I found Vaughn. And uh, Again, I'm in my sophomore year, uh, studying airport management, and uh, it's going great so far. Do you have a question yeah. uh, that's that's come to mind while listening to uh, some of the guests? I do. Uh, after hearing what Triple AE has to offer, I guess my biggest question would be: uh, for someone like me with fairly limited experience, in what capacity would I be able to be involved or uh, contribute? That's a great question. I'll let any of you guys chime in on that. Oh, Robert, you need to unmute. I'll hop in while Robert's unmuting. So, you know, again, as an educator, we always encourage students to join AAAE as early as they can in their career. If nothing else, just to listen and learn from the people in the industry. Um, because you might not know what to ask, or you might not think you can contribute anything yet, which isn't true. You can, because you, you have a history, even though you don't necessarily know that it's applicable to airports. Uh, but it's just to get yourself you know, exposed to the industry. Um, most of our airports, actually, I think all of our airports here on the panel, we have operating air traffic control tower and are near busy airspace. So we have to know the ins and outs of air traffic uh, around our area. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to, uh, to apply air traffic control to the airport environment and getting involved in AAAE is just going to open that up to you. Uh, so, yeah. And I know Vaughn has a, a student chapter of the AAAE, so nothing wrong with going to a meeting. Sure. Robert, you wanted to chime in there? Yeah, abso absolutely. Uh, and, and, uh, you know, I think it starts with, uh, uh, just as Seth mentioned, uh, uh, you know, your student chapter at your college uh, here in Denver, got Metro State University, has a very active airport management program uh, associated with AAAE. Uh, I've been involved with AAAE for about 35 years. I was the academic uh, relations chair for six um, and, uh, uh, you know, we created some of the 
uh, programs that are very, very successful now during the annual conferences. Uh, we actually do uh, speed interviewing uh, candidates. Uh, one of the things that I really recommend and we're seeing more and more, uh, and I'm sure that uh, uh, you know, Ohio State and, and others uh, have the CM program that AAAE uh, has. It, it really provides uh, not only a certification in airport management, but uh, it will tell a future, you know, prospective uh, employer in airport uh, that you actually know some of the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the textbook stuff uh, that uh, we like to to think is, is kind of the basic uh, foundation of anything that you do when when you come to work at an airport and you know you've seen one airport you've seen one airport so there's there's so many different things and aspects to them so uh, getting that internship uh, program is very very important because how do you get experience when you can't get a job the internship is the answer and so start with your your college chapter then look at your uh, regional chapter, uh, the Northeast uh, uh, AAAE chapter um, is very active. Uh, I've been involved with the Northeast chapter, Southwest chapter, and now the Northwest chapter. So uh, that's, I think, the pathway, but definitely look into the CM program. Um, and, uh, you know, it's always a good fallback uh, position. I wanted to be a fighter pilot in the worst possible way. Uh, 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 I was the poster child, even though there was no diagnosis for it uh, back in the day for ADD. Um, uh, airport management is the perfect job for anyone with ADD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, I, Vince, can I add sure. that Absolutely. I myself was a student member of the American Association of Airport Executive many years ago. Um, and one thing I can appreciate about the AAAE is their willingness to help students. In fact, um, there's a special rate for a student membership. And when you attend the conferences, um, you also get a special rate. So they're very supportive. And I feel that, you know, once I did join um, that organization as a student member, I feel like the doors opened because they were very instrumental in putting me in touch with the right people. So if, if Adi, you and Trevor are not student members yet, it's, it, you know, sign up today because it was really, really helpful to me. Yeah, I like to just piggyback in general with what everybody's saying and just recommend to you guys and to all that are watching that you do whatever you can to get involved in terms of starting a, a communication with somebody in the industry, um, whether it's one of the people from the show, I'm sure would be happy to start guiding you a bit or, or somewhere local for you where, you know, up in New York or something like that. But to really start, uh, start that process so that you can begin, you know, a back and forth and a networking thing that's going to, to benefit you. As Seth said earlier, um, it's a small industry. It's a, it's a big, small industry. And, you know, um, I actually probably have met two out of four of the guests on the, on the show. Um, through some event and that type of thing, but we all know the same people. So if I haven't met them, we, we both know somebody or we all know somebody else that knows us. So it's, it's, it's a, one of those industries that once you start to get in and uh, one of you just said, I think it was, I forget which one of you guys were talking about your persistence with really going after uh, what you want. And, and so you may hit a few roadblocks and that type of thing, but if, if it's what you want to do, if you want to get into airport management and operations, et cetera, then uh, that's something to do. I'm going to, um, I, I want to cover another area, but before I do that, I wanted to go back to you, Robert, and let you talk a little bit more about how you wanted to be a military pilot. And then what was that transformation from that point that got you to where you are now? Well, when I realized that I was not as good a pilot as I thought I was, uh, uh, you know, that realization took took a little bit of time. Uh, I had to, you know, pick myself up by the bootstraps and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, there's more pathways to Rome uh, than one. And uh, uh, eventually when, when I realized that I was not going to be a fighter pilot, I decided to, uh, I was going to pursue my other interest, which was actually was uh, anthropology. I, uh, um, you know, studied uh, anthropology uh, the University of Buffalo and, and uh, I got my bachelor's master's degree, uh, migrated actually into 
uh, economic theory and migration theory uh, and, and got back on, on the business side. And all of a sudden, this uh, opportunity fell in my lap to actually manage an airport while at the same time developing a piece of property for a gentleman I was working uh, for uh, while trying to put myself through graduate school and uh, working on my doctorate. And uh, uh, so, so uh, all of a sudden, I got back in the aviation business. And the only reason I got uh, even uh, approached by my boss uh, to do this is I had a total of one and a half hours of flight time. And he thought I was the most experienced um, uh, member of his, uh, his team. So um, as I mentioned- Did you say one and a half hours? One and a half hours, yes. <laughs> accidental solo in a uh, ultralight, no less. Um, uh, yeah, scary. Um, but- uh, uh, what was interesting, uh, my first airport, uh, I, I got to mow the asphalt runway. Um, so that was my start and, and uh, you know, progressively uh, worked my way up the ladder to where uh, I've been here at Centennial Airport for the last 20 years. It's a, big, it's a very busy airport, uh, second busiest in the U.S. as far as GA is concerned. Uh, since COVID, we've actually been uh, in the top five uh, airports uh, in the U.S. as far as operations is concerned. We're still uh, operating, we'll probably end up uh, somewhere around 340,000 operations this year. So um, uh, it, it's, it's a busy place, uh, but it's all corporate. Um, uh, I've really enjoyed the GA side. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes airlines, their you know, long term planning is tomorrow's lunch. So uh, I, I kind of like smelling jet fuel in the morning, being able to talk to pilots uh, and at the same time being able to grow this airport. And uh, a thousand different hats you wear every day. In fact, uh, Vince, I sent you uh, just before the show started uh, uh, an article on airport management, an airport manager wanted that I wrote uh, uh, following uh, uh, Foster's uh, article back in the, I think, late 50s uh, and updated it for modern times. So it's a three pager and tells you everything that you will be doing as an airport manager. So, um, wow. Please well, great. Well, while, while we're talking about that, because that's one of the areas I wanted to make sure that we cover today. Uh, and and, uh, and Flora, I still want it because Flora has a great story too about how she got started. So I'm, I haven't forgotten about that. But while we're talking about the different aspects of it, if we could briefly from each of you, just tell these young professionals and the ones that are watching, what are the different things that you actually can do at an airport? Because you deal with everything. You have safety, you have operations, you have maintenance, you have security, you know, you deal with FBOs, you deal with um, air, airport, uh, airport noise abatement. Um, and then you, you have a relationship with the city, the county, the state, et cetera. So can you guys kind of sum that up? Yeah, actually, yeah, Vince, uh, if you look at that article, it uh, lists everything, and I mean literally everything uh, that you could possibly do. Um, you know, the other thing is you have to be able to predict the weather. Uh, you have to be able to explain to an Alaska bush pilot the same uh, runway conditions as, uh, as a Florida-based pilot, um, and that uh, braking action is, in fact, good. Uh, so uh, just a just a ton of different things. So I won't belabor them because I could spend uh, two hours on it. But uh, Okay. I think, you know, they often call the manager the jack of all trades. And that's yes. such a true term for all of us. Um, we are expected to know a little bit at the very least about everything. And um, it's true that on a day to day, you wear so many different hats um, because you're at the center of it. You know, you are the conductor of the orchestra. I often say you got to know you know, the many different facets and elements on who to go to or talk to when you're trying to solve a problem. So there's a lot there. Yeah, I mean, it's so wide ranging, right? One day you have to put on a, a, you know, a business outfit and go speak to the local government agency. And the next day you could be out running around chasing a fox off of a runway, right? Or trying to get the birds off. I mean, it's some people call being an airport manager, the mayor of a city because everything is there. Um, and as, especially if you work at a, a GA airport or a smaller airport as a, you know, the, the staff is smaller. So you do more and more of all different kinds of things. So it's a total full spectrum of different things that um, you can do in an airport. Yeah. And I see John shaking his head in complete agreement. So John, you must have some thoughts about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, you are, I said, Seth said it, that it's a city. Uh, and you uh, have all different responsibilities there. 
and hit it on the head. I've gone out and then had to chase that fox or that coyote, do that runway inspection. And the next thing you know, I'm putting on a shirt and tie and doing a presentation about emergency response to a delegation of airport executives from China. So you never know. Every day is different. I think that's what makes it really interesting and really exciting is I may have a schedule of meetings for the day, but I don't know what's going to happen next. Could be building evacuation, could be an inaugural event for uh, new flights that we had this morning here uh, that I was involved in. So every day is different. Every day is challenging. And no matter what area that you're really interested in, it is happening at the airport. And one area I've seen that's grown uh, tremendously is IT. Uh, when I started here at this airport, there was three members in our IT uh, field. Now we have its own division of 20 uh, plus members. Wow. The way technology has grown so much and airports have you know, a backbone on that technology. And we've had instances where we've had fiber line cuts and you realize how much you rely on your IT folks to help run the systems of the airport. And I had to learn a lot about IT very quickly uh, and to understand it and to be able to communicate with all the different people, from maintenance people to IT people to finance people uh, to business people. So, yeah, you wear many different hats, but it's really exciting that way. Sure. I'm going to go back to Flora. Flora, at the early, part, at an early point in your career, you actually uh, said you worked in a gift shop. So you want to tell us a little bit of how you got started? Yeah. Um, well, I got bit by the aviation bug at a very young age and because I had a family member who um, was a director at the Mexico City International Airport. But I have always just loved um, airplanes. And um, early on, I knew I wanted to, to, to learn how to fly. So I pursued um, a certificate, a private pilot certificate, um, starting when I was 15. Um, and got my private pilot certificate when I was 17. But my first industry job was working at the airport gift shop at um, Burbank Airport. And it's not so much that I wanted to work, you know, selling candy and potato chips and newspapers. Um, I had a strategy and I knew that folks coming into the gift shop would be folks in addition to just the traveling public you know, pilots, airport managers, um, directors, or, or whatever. So my goal was to, to meet individuals and to establish relationships so that I could myself get a job in the industry. And that worked because eventually, soon after I started working there, um, I met the FBO manager that was working at, at one of the two FBOs in the airport, we started a friendship. Eventually, I asked him, hey, do you have any job openings? And the rest is history. So whereas my first job was at the airport gift shop, my second job was working at the FBO. And I stayed there for six years while I pursued my degree in um, aviation administration from Cal State University of Los Angeles. And that really, the degree coupled with the little experience that I had um, you know, working at the airports, at the FBO and the gift shop and my private pilot certificate really set the foundation for me to pursue the career, ultimately ending here in um, airport management. Yeah. Wow. Um, that's, that's quite a path that you took, but, but hats off to you for that. I'm going to go back to the students because uh, we've got about 15 minutes left and I want to make sure that we've covered our bases in terms of some of the things that, that are important to you guys one of you being a sophomore and the other being a junior, uh, and both of you were recommended to uh, from, from your class to, to be a part of this program. So I can turn it over to you, uh, Adi, or, or to you, Trevor, uh, if you guys have another question for the panel. Uh, I do have a question. Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, this is for uh, Mr. Oluslagers, and uh, it's basically about uh, your experience on the uh, AAAE Policy Review Council. So uh, do members of the AAAE Policy Review Council advise uh, lawmakers on matters of aviation or aviation security? Is that something that they do? Is it appropriate? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, great question. So the Policy Review Council is kind of an advisory body 
for the executive board of AAAE. Um, there's, you know, a lot of representations from, from different airports, uh, all sizes. And so invariably, uh, you know, everyone has a different uh, uh, take on, on a particular issue, whether it's security or whether it's uh, uh, AIP funding, but very often uh, it's kind of a clearinghouse, if you will, of thought uh, to give to the executive committee, uh, but also to AAA staff. Uh, AAA staff uh, from Todd Haupley on, uh, uh, you know, do a lot of the lobbying on Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., Congress. Um, you know, they help generate the dollars that flow back to the airports through the Airway Trust Fund. And so uh, by letting them know what the concerns are at the local airports um, allows them to uh, uh, have more ammunition. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, not only just uh, provide that information, but we talk amongst ourselves. Um, it's a very large group of people, uh, but it's as, a, as, as far as a committee or a council goes, it's, uh, it's actually well run and very effective. Um, uh, you know, sometimes the size of a committee tells you how uh, messed up things are, but in this particular case, it's a, a very effective committee. Thank you. Trevor, how about you? Did you have a question? Oh, I got one for uh, Laura about getting in with the FBO. Was it, was it very competitive getting in, getting that job? Is it your second job? Actually, uh, I would say no, because it started with the relationship that I developed with the F FBO manager coming to the gift shop. So he knew I was a friendly person and provided good customer service. But it was that relationship um, that really opened the door. And, and I think that's very important. And that's a key piece of advice for both you and Adi is get out there and establish those relationships, look for those mentors. That'll be really helpful. Yeah, if I may jump in on that, because I, I sure. think Florida makes a really important point here. Um, you know, uh, our students from MSU, they, they work for the FBOs. They work also for the gift shop out here. Uh, it is getting that foot in the door. Um, you know, we've got... Uh, uh, all sorts of companies on the airport that provide services. Uh, uh, the flight schools need help, um, uh, scheduling, et cetera, et cetera. So um, just to Flora's uh, point, you know, don't hesitate to go to an airport, knock on as many doors as you can, whether it means washing an airplane or waxing it or, you know, selling that trinket in the gift shop. Uh, you get to know people. Uh, I get to know the folks in, the, in our local gift shop when I need a, uh, you know, a trinket or a sectional or in the old days, a sectional, not, not anymore. But, um, you know, it's, uh, that's, that's the way to get into the business, frankly. Yeah, if they don't mind, um, I mentioned it when we were talking yesterday, there's no bad experience in aviation. Uh, before I got in airport management, I was throwing bags on the ramp for TWA, emptying, emptying the labs there or in working in Delta Cargo and doing shipping there, which was really not airport management, but it gave me a different perspective and other areas and aspects of that I would be involved in. So there's really no bad experience. And whatever job that you can get in aviation will only help um, with your experience level and your knowledge as you, you move on to getting into airport management. Yeah, and we were talking before we went live and, and you guys were talking with Trevor. Trevor, you have the military background and, and some very strong uh, aspects of it in terms of safety, uh, et cetera, uh, SMS and, and that type of thing. Uh, what, what would you guys recommend? Trevor is in his junior year and he's already got a strong background out in the field, so to speak. So what would you guys recommend to him to accelerate his career as an example? Yeah, I'll take this. I, I, I get a lot of this question about people with military experience and how well it will transfer over to a, a civil airport job. Um, in some ways, you have a, a huge leg up because you have been out on the airfield of, of a military facility. In other ways, sometimes it's interpreted as, you know, well, the military does it one way and then, you know, the FAA does it another way. And sometimes it's hard to, you know, make that, make that transfer. It's not, but sometimes it's interpreted that way. So what I would do, especially if you're interested in safety and safety management systems, is start knowing what you have already from experience, but 
sort of re-educate yourself in the civil side. And so there's a lot going on in terms of uh, publications with respect to safety management systems at airports. There are committee meetings, there are presentations, there are webinars. The more you can just get involved in attending, um, you're gonna learn the civil side of it. And you're also gonna meet people that are interested in developing SMS at their airport, which eventually is gonna learn lean towards having to hire somebody. So it's leveraging what you have, but really building upon the military experience in both the knowledge base for civil in the civil side, as well as the networking. Thank you for that. Yeah. I might add, if, if I could, uh, sure. you know, I always tell perspective, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, students that are coming through the door, you know, first of all, follow your passion. Uh, it's a lot easier to get out of bed in the morning when you uh, enjoy doing something. And, um, you know, in my case, I frankly didn't know what I was going to do. Uh, I got into this business uh, very late, way, way later than Seth did. So um, talking about being a newcomer, uh, you know, I've been doing this for 37 years now, but, um, uh, you know, follow, follow your passion if, uh, you know, whatever it is, but don't get hung up if, if, if it doesn't work out or you find out you don't like it. As John said, there is no bad job in airports, period. Yeah, that's, that sets me up for the next thing I wanted to ask all of you about. All of you have been through, all of us have been through 9-11. Now we've been going through for the last eight or nine months, the COVID-19. So there are things that, that happen uh, that affect the industry uh, and, and that type of thing. I think it's one of the, the bigger challenges for students when they're trying to figure out, you know, how to continue to work their way through and work their way up. Uh, into to a career. What type of uh, advice do you guys have, particularly in terms of obstacles that, that they may face? I mean, we never know what, what are all of our obstacles are going to be, but all of us have been through the ups and downs. And I, I just like to give them some encouragement from people that have been through it. So maybe from each of you. I might, I might, uh, it, I've noticed something and, and it's something I've shared with my students in the classes that I teach about aviation, especially when we're going through this COVID situation. Um, and it goes back to a, a diagram that our CEO many years ago showed our board during uh, the 09, um, uh, cry, uh, you know, the economy uh, issues in 09. And at that time he was trying to sell about building a new runway at this airport. And the commissioners are like, well, why should we spend all of that money? Look at what traffic is doing. And one of the diagrams that he showed them was a diagram that goes back to the 70s and shows in-plane passengers and aviation growth. And all along the way, there's different blips that happen um, in our history with uh, oil crisis or there's wars or SARS incident or 9-11 or now we have COVID. And it's blips all along the way. and Aviation may have a, a slight setback there, but all through those years, there's a continuous growth of aviation. So aviation and air transportation is always going to grow. It may have little setbacks some little blips where we may not have as many jobs available right now, but aviation and tra air transportation is something that people depend on from a business standpoint, from a, a leisure standpoint, and there's always going to be uh, the jobs that are going to be there. And there's always people retiring. Uh, we hear about the job shortage uh, of air traffic controllers and pilots due to baby boomers uh, retiring. Well, that goes across all the board of all jobs, including airport management, where there are a number of people who will be retiring. And so there's going to be need for that to be able to step, uh, step in and look for those replacement uh, people. So it's always going to it's always going to grow. Uh, the best thing you can do is that is that mentorship and those contacts and and be prepared through the different programs that are out there, the certifications that are out there that students can get to put you in the best position. Yeah, thank to you. Dovetail off of that a little bit. You know, sure. I, we've all in the industry over the last twenty plus years seen these economic cycles, and John's absolutely right. You know, just to push airports a little bit is that I think we are the least sensitive to those cycles. Uh, as you know, compared to say an airline right industry, um, you know, in the good economic years, everyone out there that's in school wants to be a pilot because they're hiring and the money is good and it's a really adventurous job. 
Uh, and then something happens like economically and the airlines start furloughing and then there's no jobs uh, and that's discouraging. And actually often during those times, this particular period included, we see lots of students that thought they wanted to be professional pilots move to another area in aviation, including airport, including airport management. Uh, so now's no better time, I think, to get educated in airports because you know, while we may slow down in the areas of, you know, generating revenue because we don't have as many passengers going through the terminal as much, uh, we're always growing, we're always. We may s slow down our growth during these times, but we're always growing. And I don't really hear too much about mass layoffs in the airport side. When, you know, when in airlines, you do hear that. So anyone out there that, you know, wants a more steady job that stays, you know, and keeps you in aviation, I'm always trying to sell airport management. <laughs> the necessity yeah. of airports. Flora Absolutely. or Robert? Yeah, and you know, I was gonna say, you know, obviously um, this pandemic has been very, very challenging for airports. And, um, but I would say to the students, don't let this get you down. Um, you may not be able to physically visit um, an airport or meet up, but this virtual world is great. And I always say to students, you know, one advantage, and it's the biggest advantage that today's generation has, is the technology. I mean, sure, when I started, absolutely. we didn't have email, we didn't have, you know, the internet, we didn't have Google, and everything was just a little tougher to do than today. So you could use those tools to your advantage to put yourself out there to make the connections and um, to volunteer for um, airports, uh, do whatever to get your name out there, and again, do establish those relationships and to, to network virtually, if anything. I think that's a really great point. And, and actually what we're doing today on this call is a great example. You're in Los Angeles, um, you know, um, Robert's in Denver, John is down in Fort Lauderdale, and um, Seth is somewhere in Ohio. I think it's near a university there. Um, <laughs> Seth, you know, I just had to give you a hard time. No, um, but everybody, we are all over. And then you guys are up in New York uh, near Vaughn College. So uh, it, it, technology, it, that's a really great point. It, it, it does give you a lot of opportunity to do things that we had to find coins to put in a pay phone to try to do. Um, and you guys have Google and we used to have to go to the library and actually go through these big books and research stuff and, and mark stuff and then not mark the library books so you don't get in trouble, et cetera. So, okay, I'm really reminiscing there. <laughs> Let me give Robert a chance to, to, to bring us home on this because we're going to be wrapping up in a minute. Yeah, so, so Vince uh, and, and for Trevor, I actually have two veterans, um, a Marine Corps veteran and uh, Air Force veteran on my staff. And uh, they, they remind me uh, on a regular basis, the watchword that I would like to throw out um, is rigid flexibility. Uh, you know, rigid, uh, be dogged about what you do, uh, but be flexible uh, in everything that you do because uh, things do change, uh, whether it's COVID, whether it's the recession of 09 uh, or 9-11. And uh, uh, interestingly enough, the interns we are getting right now, you know, they were toddlers when 9-11 uh, when happened. So uh, I, st I still live that every day, but it's uh, uh, rigid flexibility. I'll close with that. Well, and with that, I'd like to thank you guys very much for being what a what a great group of professionals from some, you know, with the combination of your your education backgrounds and in your airport management backgrounds. What what a perfect scenario to really share. And we probably could have gone a lot longer because I even had a bunch of questions, but I was like, well, you can't go two hours with this. So anyhow, uh, really appreciate it. I want to thank you all for that. And I really like to thank you, Trevor and, and Adi, for uh, taking the time and being available and being a part of this. Uh, I think it's great information for you individually, but also for everybody that's watching. And by the way, I'll say hello to Vaughn College, to, as, they, as they say, a shout out, because I know a bunch of people from there are watching. And I actually uh, just got a, a text from Dr. Lubner, who is the chair of, of management there at Vaughn College. And I also would like to thank the, the president, uh, Dr. DeVivo um, of Vaughn College for, for you know, helping move this forward and, and, and setting up this opportunity. Uh, so everybody, thank you for being on the program. We have run out of time. This is All Things Aviation. So on behalf of the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation, and by the way, it was really fun hearing you guys' stories about Bob. I can never hear enough about him. 
Uh, and, and also thank you for the acknowledgement of Tracy Forrest, uh, who passed about a month ago. So, but on behalf of the Bob Hoover Legacy Foundation, my name is Vince Mickens, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching and uh, hope we catch up with us. Uh, actually, next week will be a, 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 a repeat, and then we'll, we'll be back live uh, the following week. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving and holiday, and thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.